So there's a couple different kinds of lifts. I chose a lift that's a little bit shorter that can uh, fit inside of the garage space that I have. In my particular scenario, I'm not gonna be using my lift every single day all the time. It's mostly just like a hobby project for me. So I just got something that's gonna be able to handle the particular project I have in mind. So things to think about when you're getting a lift is one, how tall the ceiling is, two, what kind of power. I had 220 uh, wired into this post right here so we can just tie the tower into that. And then as it gets shipped, this thing weighs a lot. There was no residential shipping option with this, so I had to have it shipped to a like a port or somewhere, and then they load it onto a trailer, and then I managed to get into my garage. And now that it's here, we can separate the two towers, move the base plate, and get it into position. So when we're taking off the shipping brackets on the top and the bottom, we're making sure not to have any limbs or uh, fingers or anything between the two as they're falling down. Because once again, these things weigh a lot. All right, so we are currently, we've read the instruction booklet, surprise, I know, and we are putting marks on the concrete where the lift is gonna go. And so we're putting down some tape first and then marking on the tape with a marker so we can get the layout before we actually start drilling holes in the cement. Now, one thing that's interesting is that this lift on the website said that it was fine with four inch thick concrete, which is what I have here. But in the instruction booklet, it's asking for seven. So it's hard to know exactly which one is correct. I would assume the instruction booklet, but I'm never gonna be anywhere near the 10,000 pound capacity of this lift. So we should be all right. So before we get too far with the, uh, with the moving the lifts over here, we're gonna measure out on the floor exactly where the towers are gonna stand. Now, one of the important things we gotta figure out is where the center of gravity is on the vehicles that we're gonna be lifting up. And that's usually somewhere around the rear view mirror and the driver's seat. And so we have laid out on the ground, we've kind of like parked our virtual truck right here and the tower is going to stand about six inches away from the crack either of the two cracks um, which gives it more support on the concrete so putting that mark on the base plate allows us to line it up with the mark we made on the concrete earlier and which just saves our back there's a uh, less moving when we have everything measured out beforehand so we figured out why these are so heavy because i was really surprised i'm like man for being an inexpensive lift this is amazing but you've got all of these components uh, like the lift arms and everything inside of here for shipping and that's why it was so <laughs> scary heavy i'm like man i'm always not prepared for this that's why so we're going to pull these out so it's lighter and easier on our backs and then we can use the dolly to transport it the rest of the way around and uh, put it close to position so the lift foot plate is 17 and a quarter so they know that this is the back that's what we've measured for so I line that up go 17 and a quarter here and make a mark there so that way what i do is because this is side down i can drop that on here and then when i stand it up i'll be closer to this mark I make a long arrow tail so that when this is covered up i can know that it's going to be within so far big ones little ones i'm there so we've already pre-marked the rear and the front you can see that little pencil mark there and as we bring this close we know that this is lined up over the mark we can lift it up and kick out the dolly and set it down right close to our mark all right so these lifts are nine and a half feet tall and i have 10 feet tall ceilings uh, so we are really close to the top there but it's working and if you check out right here you can see our mark measure twice set down once and uh, we're really close to the center of this metal pad right here and our center mark. So we can just shimmy it and put it in the exact place we need, but at least it's close. Now let's get the other one uh, positioned here. Take it lighter first. <laughs> we can pull out the arms. So heavy. Oh yeah. Three, two, one. Contact, it's the feeling. It's the mission. I just did it myself. It's contact. Well, now the other tower is up. <laughs> well, now both towers are in place. There's been a couple earthquakes in Utah in the last couple days, so we're just hoping one doesn't hit right now. 101 yesterday, and more than 20 of those were four or higher. No, they're, not four, but close to four, like 3.5. They're pretty six. big. 
So I brought this hammer because it doesn't scratch your paint and it's, these are heavy and it's easier to just go like this. We need 104.33 after converting from the metric. 104.25 is where we're at. So just a little, little love tap and we're there. And that same measurement is gonna go from each of the toes on both sides of the lift. And that makes sure that we're square. We've been converting from metric to uh, imperial units. Everything is perfect. It is so happy. Uh, we trace it, get this out of here, and then we'll start running cables and all the fun goodies that we have to do. That place not supposed to go on just yet. We just placed it down to make sure that it would fit and we haven't messed up any alignment. Measure twice, don't cut anything. How deep were we when it went through? You had about a half inch to spare. We're just shy of four inches thick. <laughs> That wasn't close. No. <laughs> Dang. That one's like two and three quarters inch thick, I guess. Yeah. All right, so after drilling a bunch of pilot holes, we figured out that the concrete thickness is not universally, you know, we were gonna, we were gonna risk it with the four inches because that's what it said on the website, but my concrete is not four inches, so we are going to double the price of this project and replace the slab. But it's better to be safe than sorry. Right, Brian? It's better to be safe than dead. This is gonna add a couple weeks, um, but it'll be just a couple seconds for you guys. After doing all our cutting, we can see some pretty extreme variations in, how, in the thickness of the concrete. Like look over here in this corner, like that's barely two inches thick right there. So I'm pretty glad we made the decision to uh, stop installing, remove the concrete, and actually get something that's gonna be thick and heavy. Because with a vehicle with a two post lift like this, you don't, I don't wanna take any risks. So here we are. And after seeing the concrete and how, you know, not four inches it is, I think we made the right choice. So it's been about, I don't know, two months since we poured the concrete slab. Now we have eight inches of concrete instead of the four, three or four inches that we had before. So I feel much better about it. Brian, how do you feel about it? I'm so happy you went with that decision. It wasn't my decision to make, but I'm impressed. Good judgment. Staying alive is kind of important. Yep. Anyway, so what we've done up till now is we've moved the pillars into place on the concrete pad. They're kind of centered. We've measured the distance. We've squared it up with the doorway um, for the garage. You can see that the posts line up pretty well with the, uh, the garage behind me. And now we are going to drill the holes and put them in. Yep. That's the next step. We could have installed this lift sooner, but time kind of got away from us. I think the concrete would have been ready to install in maybe two or three weeks. But, you know, as time passes, the concrete gets harder and harder. So it's even better that we waited a couple months to install it. So what we've done so far is we've drilled holes in the concrete for the anchor bolts. These anchors kind of just act like drywall anchors. Um, they get pounded into the hole, and then this piece down here at the bottom expands as we tighten the nut at the top. And that's what holds the whole thing in place. Also with our concrete, even though it's a brand new pad, it is a little bit wavy. And so we have to shim the uh, lift itself to make sure that it's plumb, you know, straight up and down and not tilted one way or the other. And we do that before we tighten the bolts down all the way. Plus the concrete has uh, silica dust in it. And that's why we're wearing the mask because the silica dust can damage your lungs. And you know, eye, ear protection, all that good stuff. For this lift, the bolts they shipped out were three quarter inches and we're using a three quarter inch bit um, to drill the holes. Now you might be curious, like this is a really big lift and these are really small anchors, but the concrete that we're drilling into is 4,000 PSI, which means that you can put 4,000 pounds on each square inch of it because it's per square inch. And so the concrete's gonna get harder over the next 100 years, obviously. But if you think about that, a vehicle, like a truck, is anywhere from 5,000 to you know 7,000 pounds. And that's spread out over the whole pad and not necessarily on each bolt. 
but each square inch is 4,000 pounds per square inch. So they're a lot stronger than they look. So when we pound those in, we're not going till it's super tight just yet because we're gonna shim the base of it. So these right here are the shims that come with the lift. So if the lift is not plumb or stable, you can just slide these under the bolts and uh, prop it up till it is straight up and down, left and right. So with the torque specs, our instructions did not come with any. So we looked around and kind of got the torque specs for other uh, lifts that have been installed and they ranged anywhere from like 40 all the way up to 150, which is a pretty large range. And so we just kind of split the difference and we're going right around 100 or so. But I would say just follow the instructions that come with your lift. For me, I just want to make sure that there's enough because like when the bolt's going down, that anchor is spreading out inside of the concrete. And so if we don't go tight enough, then that spreader, that anchor isn't going to be tight inside of the, the shaft. We have to make sure that it is biting. Once it's turning really easily, it's hard to explain. It's turning really easy and I think that expander is spreading out. And then once it kind of stops, which we feel is right around 100 or so, um, that's when we know it's finished tightening down. But once again, follow the instructions and the torque specs if it's written in them. So this right here is the pulley and it goes on the top of the post just like we have over here. And that is what the car is going to hang from as we set it into place. Then we can take this long metal cable and wrap it through the posts. Right now we're taking these massive silver cables and routing them through each of the towers. And this is what keeps the arms of the lift synchronized. These metal cables are a fail safe just in case one side, like the hydraulics on one side breaks, the, uh, the cables will keep both arms on the same level. It's a safety thing. So we're taking one of the cables, dropping it through the carriage, down along the ground, and then it's gonna pop up through that pulley right there, up into the top, and sink right down here into this hole. And then we'll put some nuts on it from the inside. And then, the hydraulic lines run between the cables and under the cables. As you can see, there's a gap there for your hoses. It's important that you route it in such a way that the cables don't fray on it. Uh, you can grip the middle one by using an open end wrench and then compress the fitting by tightening it snugly. You can kind of feel where it yields. When you look at the end of these, we're not using Teflon tape. For one, for the instructions didn't say to, but they're also uh, kind of fluted, ferruled, whatever you want to call them. You ought to make sure when you do this one to go underneath the cables so that everything's consistent in terms of not being in the path of the cables. So this one's going to go underneath it here, and then it goes to the power head unit here. Always make sure that you be careful when you're threading them together so that you don't have any conflicts with the threads. These are done pretty nice so you don't have to worry. Now you will notice that when I was tightening this, this one also tightened. So I'm gonna back this off and make sure this is tight as well. So to summarize what goes where, you have a short hose to a three-way union, another short hose, and then the longest hose with the 90s goes up to the power head unit or pump here. I like my hose to be tight to the unit, so I'm gonna support it on the side here. It just makes the overall profile smaller easier to not snag stuff on. I definitely want to use a funnel to get the stuff in. Trying to pour past this electrical box is problematic at best without one. Should take about three gallons. So you can see we're at the max. The min is only here, so this is the operating range that you need it to be in. So after we bleed it, we'll go ahead and get the level more fine-tuned where it needs to be. It can go up or down from there. Typically, the higher the lift goes, the lower this goes as the rams fill with hydraulic fluid. Given that we're starting about a third of the way up the column, we'll just have to wait and see where it's going to be. There's going to be a lot of air to purge. All right, so we did have to wire up our own cable um, right there into the side of the motor. We're just going to kind of take it up this post and kind of hang it on the beam and bring it down this other side. So this did not come with the lift, we had to buy this separately. 
So this right here is part of the release cable for the locks, this little guy. It uh, keeps the lift from you know falling if something ever goes wrong. And right now we have taken the wire, stuck it through this pin, wrapped it around the pulley, dropped it all the way down through to the bottom. And then it's the thin wire that you can see here going all the way across out the bottom. There's a pulley in the bottom here and it's surprisingly difficult to get it to go through because it wants to go out the hole for this hose that goes up to the pump. So you got to find a way to get it to stab and then creep up to here and then run it up to the lock release there. So this right here just kind of like resets itself because of the spring and we have the wire pinched right here on this side and every time this is compressed it also releases the other side so you don't have to walk across and do both sides. Before we put this plate back on, I just want to show that there are two nuts holding the end of this large cable together. Remember that one cable that uh, keeps the whole thing synchronized? And then this plate is what uh, protects. Did you screw these in? Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> I was like, that's loose. Problematic. And then uh, yeah, we'll put can... this plate over top of the cables. So now we have the plate dropped down in place and we have the two holes drilled in the cement and we are going to use those same type of cement anchors, um, drop them through to hold that plate in place. So. All right, so the lift is installed. There's only one thing left to do. I think we have to, actually a couple things. We have to raise it up and drop it down to make sure the hydraulic fluid is dropped off. Yeah, we're not gonna go to the full height so we kinda don't have to do that either. And then we're gonna put my truck on it and uh, hope. <laughs> and hope for the best. So when the lift is all the way down, these legs can move, but when it's up, that's when the legs lock into place. So my backing up job isn't the greatest, but we're just gonna pop this up really quick, see. Get it close to the bottom of the truck. So we just realized that we're coming full circle now. We, when I first got this truck, I actually went over to Brian's channel to use his lift on my truck. And now he's here on my channel using my lift on my truck. Anyway. A lot of lifting going on. Here we go. Final time. I'm gonna let him press it and watch from out here. Three, two, one. Going up. Oop. Inspect that. <laughs> Sometimes there will be settling when it takes a load, especially with the arms being new. It's all good. All right. It's, it's just fun uh, jitters. <laughs> Round two. It's teasing us. Oh, yeah. You can hear the safety latches going at the same time. And then I double switch it. That is a touchy switch. <laughs> That's all right. So my ceiling is a little bit low, but normally, you know, my truck's also pretty tall. We're gonna make a marker mark <laughs> when we get there. We're gonna look at that. All right. So we are finished. The uh, truck is up on the lift. Thanks a ton for Brian for your help. Brian, where You're can welcome. they find your channel? Brian's Mobile One. Thanks for the shirt, by the You're way. Welcome. Shirts are extremely comfortable. Have my full endorsement. <laughs> it did take us about two days to install this. So the thing that bugged me about this whole situation was on their website, it said that this lift could be installed on four inches of concrete, but that is the only place on the entire internet that would ever say such a thing. And then even in the instructions, it said that it needed to be over four inches. I think like six six inches is what it recommended. We went eight here to be super safe. But yeah, just kind of weird instruction things. There's some weird disconnect, but all in all, it worked pretty well. The one thing I was really impressed with is that everything did go together well. We didn't have to do much welding, grinding or anything. There was some minor stuff with the cable return. We had to put a notch for the spring here. And then there was a thing that was bent and shipping, but that's it. In a project this size, that's very few things. That's pretty good. And I'm glad it all worked out. I'm really happy to see you got a lift. Perfect. Now we can start on some bigger projects. Anyway, uh, thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you around.